Good morning. What will happen to the vessels in the house of God, which previously were not carried away to Babylon? What will happen to them now? Our reading is Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 19 through 22. Listen. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the carts, and concerning the remainder of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord, and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon, and there they shall be until the day that I visit them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. So according to Jeremiah, the temple vessels that remain will very soon be carried away to Babylon. All that's left, it's all, going, it's all on a one-way uh, road conveyor belt to Babylon now. Now God reassures the people that he'll deliver them. He's going to return those vessels to his temple. But the vessels will remain in Babylon until he acts to bring them back. So listen to this. The captivity is under God's direction, not Babylon's. Now remember, at this time, the false prophets are telling God's people that, oh, this will be over soon. Uh, we'll be coming back from captivity. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. It's very soon it'll be over. But it's very important to remember that it's in response to the disobedience of his people, the disregard of his people, the rebellion that they had toward God, that God permitted them, in fact, caused them to go into captivity. This is God's chastening. This is not just a thing like, oh, God was asleep and missed this and Babylon invaded and God's going to wake up one of these moments and he's going to go and smash them and bring us back. That's not the way it is. They have gone into captivity because God is chastening them. They want to end the captivity early and get back to normal, you know, back to commerce, back to uh, blending the worship of Yahweh with Chemosh, stuff like that. They've been interrupted. and Who dare interrupt us? So they've gone far from him, but he's only doing what he needs to do to bring them back. It's kind of apparent that Judah's having a lot of trouble accepting God's punishment. Well, this item today, of course, is tied in with the first, the previous two days where we talked about uh, in chapter 27 of Jeremiah here, what's going on. This goes with the previous two days where we're dealing with chapter 27 of Jeremiah. But right now, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to... Uh, not be like the people of Judah at the time that we're studying here. Help us to learn the lesson right the first time. Uh, they had a lot of trouble with this. And so now some of the vessels went to Babylon, and now they're all going to go to Babylon. And the people are still a little bit oblivious to what's going on. Help us, Lord, to learn the lessons you teach us. Help us to learn those lessons the first time you give them. May we not have to relearn a lot of these painful things. Be our guide. Help us to have receptive hearts to thee. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer and being so generous and kind to us that you even would take us on and even teach us. Help us to be your disciples, O God. Thank you for hearing our prayers and helping us be right. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the vessels that remain will not remain. They're going to be carried away. Often God's people are pretty slow learners. Let's you and I be faster learners today as we learn to trust him 